As we got to the bush, we had very little time, so we got set up very quickly for the shot. Chris gave him a whistle and caught his attention just long enough for me to take a shot. This episode of African Hunter has been brought to you by Sniper Africa and Zunga Safaris. I was so excited about this hunt, you know, not only about the opportunity to shoot great animals, but also just being able to be in one of my favorite places on earth and to have a camera crew with me to film every single moment. Zunga Safaris is located right at the foot of a mountain range which holds a lot of childhood memories. One particular mountain just stands up high above the rest and when I was 11 years old, I climbed 6,000 feet to the top of this peak and in 2012, I returned and climbed up to the top and watched the sunrise. It was one of those experiences I'll never forget and to be here again was really special. So after an incredibly successful first episode, we knew that on this next hunt, we really had to up our game. We only had a couple days to get out there and, and find our two trophy animals. So when we got to Zynga, there wasn't too much time to settle in. We had to get straight to business. Chris Bolton is an old friend of mine and you know when I saw him again it was just so good to connect and uh, he made us feel just right at home. The property is just absolutely stunning. I mean where in the world can you wake up, step outside onto your balcony, the animals are all around, it's, it's just really a personal African experience. Well we're shooting with a uh, 2506 today. Uh, same casing as the 306 we used last time, but a nice smaller bullet, so it's a, it's a faster moving round, uh, which is really nice. Um, we just want to make sure that the rifle's zeroed before we go shooting. It's always the humane thing to do. If your rifle gets bumped around in the, in the vehicle, then you can lose your zero and, and put in a bad shot. So that's what we're going to do now. The plan was to go after an Impala. On the previous hunt we went on, the Impala that we went after just eluded us and we actually missed out on taking one. So on this hunt we wanted to make up for that. Chris decided that the best plan would be to begin our hunt right at the top of the hill and then start to work our way down real slowly. We must have been there for about an hour and after scanning the bush felt stickened, Chris spotted exactly what we were looking for, a herd of Impala. Once we were within range, we set up for the shot, but things turned out to be a little bit more challenging than we had expected. The heat of the day was just so intense that the whole herd just decided to lie down in the shade. To make it even more challenging, the Impala were almost exactly the same color as the red-brown sand, and that made it almost impossible to spot them with the naked eye. Chris pointed out a particular ram that looked really good. So we had our target, but it wasn't presenting a shot, so it was going to come down to a waiting game. About an hour passed, the sun was beating down on us, we were sweating, almost the whole herd had moved off, except for the one animal that we wanted to take a shot on. Finally, the impala that we were after stood up and presented me with a shot. He was half hidden by a bush, but I could make out just enough of him to place the shot exactly where it needed to be. Man, that was cool. Yes, we must have waited for about an hour, maybe even more, uh, for him to just move out of the, the shade. It's the most stubborn impala I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but eventually, uh, eventually he came out, and I think I put a pretty good shot in him. I think he must. I think he probably ran about 50 to 50, 60 meters 
and then kind of you just saw him shake a bit and then he went straight down so I think I did get him in the vital so it was a good shot so very very happy let's go down and check him out we began the long walk down it was hot we were physically and mentally fatigued but it was all totally worth it Oh, well done. Awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. Looks like a good placement as well. Yeah, that's a perfect shot placement. Nice. It's the angle that he was standing that could have gone more into the stomach, but I mean, you can't get any better than that. Mm. It's good. And his horns are beautiful as well, but it's not huge. It's a nice trophy, but he's not, not a monster. It's actually a good gram to get out of the herd. Yeah. You don't want these guys to be beating the jeans into, yeah, the, yeah. into the herd. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a... Good, good one to get out. But he's fully developed, he's not going to grow anymore, yeah. basically. Yeah, it's all about the experience, and the experience was great. Even though the, the wait was long, it almost makes, makes it more worth it. When you finally get it, you feel even more stoked. You know, it wasn't just come out here, see the animal, take the shot quickly, and it's done. We, had to, we actually had to work for it really hard. So I'm very glad I got it. And the sound of the shot sounded quite hollow. And that's why we thought at first it might have been a stomach shot when he ran off. But within 30 to 40 seconds, he was down and uh, he was out. So it ended up being a really nice shot. I'm very, very happy. After a long day's hunting, we're welcome back to the lodge. We managed to get around the fire, just relax and have a couple drinks. And it was great to just sit around and talk about the day's events and plan for the next morning. The blessed buck is an animal that I've wanted to shoot for quite some time. I'd never shot one before, but I was looking forward to the opportunity to be able to take my first one. When I saw the sheer number of blessed buck in the area, I was just blown away. They were absolutely everywhere. And while some of you may think that this makes my job as a hunter easier, you would be mistaken. The more animals there are, the more eyes there are, and that means that it just takes one wrong move to scare off the whole herd. And that is exactly what happened. just took one wrong move and the whole herd was gone. We missed our chance, but we had to stay positive. We decided that we needed to just keep at it, change plans a bit, and head back down to the valley again to see if there was anything there at the bottom. Just as we had hoped, as we arrived, there was a huge blessed buck right out in the open. He had seen us, so we knew we had to be clever on our approach. We had to cover quite a bit of ground. So we used a large bush to keep us concealed as we moved in. As we got to the bush, we had very little time, so we got set up very quickly for the shot. It was quite a tense situation because we had been looking for an opportunity like this all day and we'd finally got it and we needed to take it with both hands. We knew that if it kept on walking, it would go over the hill and we'd miss our chance and then we may not get another chance. Chris gave him a whistle and caught his attention just long enough for me to take a shot. This is a beautiful animal, it's got a bit of heavy bases 
and he's, he's open he's opening nicely up to the top it's got a very nice thick neck so yeah this is a good all-round trophy it's, um, it's a good one to go for we didn't have quite the same waiting game like we did with the impala yesterday that was that was more a case of you know we we saw which animal we wanted quite early on and we had to just wait for it with these there were a whole lot of them and uh in the first the first field we went into they kind of disappeared as we were trying to stalk in close to them we went and we, we climbed up the mountain and we tried to find another herd and there were just so many of them that it was it was extremely tough not only to find one that was good to take but to to get close enough to them because there were so many eyes and because the moment one saw us they were off we eventually came down into the valley again where the first herd was and we saw this guy within range and kind of every time we, we try to set up it would kind of get um, over the hill and we wouldn't get a clear shot of it and we actually had to change our setup a number of times. Um, eventually he gave us a good shot and we took our opportunity quickly and it looks like I got a really good shot on him. This the shot, you know, if it was a broadside shot would have, would have been perfect. I think he was quartering away a bit which meant that I, I probably could have placed the shot slightly further back but he, he, went, he did this jump and he went straight down. So I'm extremely happy. And uh, the, the challenging hunts are the ones that are, are the most worth it because um, you've earned them. You don't just go somewhere and you shoot an animal quickly. You, you earn your hunt. Those are the ones that you remember. So I just got to thank you, Chris, for, for uh, putting me on this animal. Well, it was a long day, but totally worth it in the end. And I had lots of fun. It was awesome. Thanks. Very cool. Thanks, man. What an awesome way to end the trip. I mean, it could have gone either way. If we hadn't taken our chances on the Impala and the Blessed Buck, we very well could have come home empty-handed. Matt got great shot placement on both animals, we got all the footage we were looking for, and we were able to experience true Eastern Cape hospitality at Sungu Safaris, which was just the cherry on the top. Thank the Lord we are able to go into our next hunt with great confidence, knowing that we are able to achieve all our goals under some tough circumstances and some serious pressure. If you would like to be on African Hunter, then contact us at rtztvproductions at gmail.com. And for more hunting action, subscribe to In The Zone Hunting Productions on YouTube and follow us on Facebook.